All right, our next guest, standout tight end, as you saw this past year for the Nevada Wolfpack football team. Guy who spent a number of years with the program and then really flourished this past season, helping the pack reach, of course, the New Mexico Bowl. He's Zach Sudfeld making his first appearance on this show. How are you, Zach? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, Zach. You know, this past season, really a breakout year for you. Started all 13 games, caught 45 passes, 598 yards, and a big, uh, big time in the end zone for this team. Nine touchdowns. But let's rewind a little bit, man. It wasn't always peaches and cream for you. 2008, oh. <laughs> injured. You know what I'm talking about. You're injured. Uh, I know. Injured and unable to play. Your red shirt. Uh, you had a red shirt there. And then uh, 2011, you started the season opener. Ben and I were there against Oregon at Autzen Stadium. And uh, you caught one pass before having a season-ending leg injury. At one point, yeah. were you just like, you know what? That's a wrap. My career's <laughs> over. Hang up the cleats. I can't make it back. Did that ever cross your mind? You know what? Uh, honestly, I mean, I'd be lying to you if I if I didn't think that for a second. But uh, <laughs> but it, it, I didn't think that for long. You know, um, it was it was more the people around that uh, were tired of seeing me get hurt that were encouraging me to hang up the cleats. You know, I I always knew what I could do, and I just wanted that chance. You know, and that opportunity. And so fortunately, I was able to get it. It was a uh, long awaited, but but it was a great season this year. What was the hardest part about coming back from the injury up there in Oregon? You know. Honestly, it was the, the mental side, I think, uh, just because I had been through the whole injury thing before, and, and I thought that that, that season was going to be my, uh, my breakout year, finally you know, get the opportunity to kind of be a, one of the premier targets in the offense. And then, uh, you know, get out there and just this – it was kind of a freak injury. just got rolled up on, and, uh, and it was pretty gruesome, and I just – I couldn't believe it. I remember sitting there in the locker room, you know, with uh, – the game starting to get out of control, and I just remember thinking, this cannot be it, man. I can't go out like this. You know, it's difficult to come back from basketball. You know, Derek Rose, all this talk with that knee injury, he might miss the entire season for the Chicago Bulls. And they're, they're saying that there's that concern because in the back of your head, it's tough to come back from an injury knowing you're an athlete, knowing your body is what it's all about. And you're worried that you're going to take that blow again. You've gone through this twice, dude. Two season-ending yeah. injuries. Yeah. Was it in the back of your head? Did you want to shy away from the hits a little bit when you were out there at Mackey playing with the pack this year? You know what? Honestly, uh I mean, you you think about it in rehab, but uh, I had to, you know, fortunately for us, we had a great training staff, and and I really felt healthy going into this season. And uh, I, you know, I kind of come from a football family. I have a twin brother who played uh, wide receiver at Brown University, and my younger brother played, or he is a freshman quarterback at Indiana. And uh, I was talking with them on the phone just like two days before the Cal game, and my twin brother says, he said, you know what, Zach, as soon as you catch that first pass, you look for somebody to hit, and you hit them as hard as you can. And if you get up, then you're good. And you just play the rest of the season don't even think about it. And so that's what I did, you know, and I never looked back. So I, I can honestly tell you that I never felt fragile, and, I, you know, I felt great. Never thought about it again. Zach Sudfeld's our guest. What differences are there when you catch passes from Cody Fajardo that you notice in comparison from catching them from Colin Kaepernick? Um, <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Uh, you know, Cap, uh, to be honest, I only caught one pass from Cap, I think, in a game, but I caught a lot in practice and broke a few fingers, I think. Um, but, you know, he could really rocket it. You know, Cody Cody is a, a great player, and it was great to be able to play with him for one season. Um, they're two, you know, similar but very different quarterbacks. And, uh, and there were, th- you know, they both have the touch. It's, a, it's definitely a different ball. But I, I couldn't say that one is better than the other. But uh, but like I said, you know, to be able to play with both those quarterbacks, I mean, that's that's a, a special thing for a, for a tight end who likes to catch the ball. How much fuel does that give you and your teammates, at least going into last year, playing for the pack, and then seeing what a guy like Colin Kaepernick has accomplished, even when he was just the backup uh, for the 49ers, does that make you uh, feel like, hey, you know what, all of us can get to that level and we can compete in the NFL and even possibly become a star? Does it, it give you a little bit more of a motivation and encouragement to think, you know what, I can do this? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, especially in re- recent years, the the Wolfpack guys are really doing it in the NFL. Um, you know, even from James Michael Johnson starting as a rookie, you know, Virgil Green on the Broncos, and then you know, obviously Cap. And there are a lot of guys who are in the NFL right now. And and even talking to scouts right now, there there's there's a there are a lot of good things 
coming from Wolfpack football, and, and they like to see that. They like the work ethic, you know, that, that comes from playing in this system and, and everything. And, and with Cap, I mean, you knew he was going to be a special player just by seeing him and his work ethic day in and day out. So it wasn't a surprising thing that he, he stood out the way that he did, and, but it definitely helps us out as Wolfpack players trying to go to the next level. Well, I think everyone would agree that your chance to be there is very high. So kind of walk us through what it's been like from the end of the season to now in terms of this process for you when it comes to trying to get to that next level. Yeah, it, it, it's been an interesting process and definitely nothing I've ever been through before. Um, you know, honestly, through the whole season, I uh, there were agents calling, but I, I kind of deferred that till after the season. I just said I, I really want to focus on – you know, being a college athlete, this is kind of my one season that I'm healthy and, and, and finally having a good year. And so I don't want to look, look too, you know, too far ahead. And, and so the agents respected that. And then afterwards, a couple, you know, days after the, the New Mexico Bowl, I uh, signed with an agent and I went out to Florida and trained. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I didn't get a combine invite. And, uh, but so I came back here and did pro day and, and that went well. And so now I'm just kind of waiting, I'm talking to teams, you know, getting, uh, just kind of they're getting my information and and it's kind of coming down to the wire we got about a month left and so uh we'll see what happens what's this like right now this in between time you're about a month out from this draft as you just said and now you've got uh are you talking with people are you talking to scouts with agents trying to get an idea of where you're going to fit in who you might go to i mean everything's kind of in flux right now for you right. what round are you hearing yeah, you know what? I, I've I've heard the gambit. I've heard everything. I don't. Uh, um, to be honest, I'm just I'm just trying to focus on what I can do right now. Trying to focus on you know just staying in the weight room and and continuing to train and and being prepared for for uh, you know many camps and and when we get the the ball rolling. But obviously, you know my agents are out there working, and a lot of teams have contacted them and, and contacted me. Uh, a lot of it is you know. The, some of the medical stuff they just want to make sure that everything is is good and uh and which it is and so at this point it's just a waiting game and and you know i'm excited for april but i'm nervous and it you know it's not fun just waiting around uh, you feel like you have no control at this point how much sleep you getting, dude? Because I mean, you've been here. You've been in Reno six years. I know you're from California, but yeah. you know you're going to have a new home in another month. Yeah. There's no way you can really <laughs> be thinking much about anything. It's day to day for you. Uh, so exactly. how much does it consume your mind? What do you do to try to not think much about it? You know what? I'm trying to enjoy this this month here in Reno. I'm, uh, you know, honestly, I get here to the to the school to the football facility pretty early in the morning to kind of hang out all day. A lot of familiar faces. You know, the guys are just about to start spring ball today. I was joking with them that I might go to that open tryout, see if I can't, you know, get on the team as a kicker. <laughs> and maybe uh, pull a Leon Sandcastle or something like that. But, uh, but no, you know, just, just enjoying being around some of my buddies from the team, you know, who are still playing. And, and also the, the guys who I was seniors with who are, who are also going with the, uh, to the NFL. And so, you know, it's good. It's fun. And, you know, I'm just trying to keep my mind occupied at this point. We ask every former pack athlete, and we're talking to Zach Sudfeld. We ask every former pack athlete this when you have him on: your favorite or maybe most memorable moment as a member of the Wolfpack football team would be what? Oh well, I mean, obviously, I think you know most guys would say the Boise State game. That was just a, a crazy game to to play in. It was, uh, you know, it was just one of those, you know, kind of magical, uh, magical games. That's uh, that. I, as far as the game goes, that would be it. But man, there are some stories. You know, there are some some great times that we've had here. Just just being a part of the team, hanging out with the guys, and uh, I don't know if I could really pinpoint one, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. So you know, I'm definitely gonna miss it, but I'm excited for a new opportunity. Zach Sudfeld here live on the BCS on Fox Sports Radio 630. Zach, your coach, you know, announces uh, that he's going to uh, go ahead and step away, too, from this program. Your yeah. thoughts on that with Coach Alt's departure? And also, have you had a chance to talk to Brian Pullian? Your thoughts on what he is and, and that decision, uh, was it the right one to bring him in here? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, with Coach Alt, uh, like I said, I was in Florida training, and uh, my one of my buddies, uh, my former roommate Matt Gallus, the center, he he texted me one day and said, you know, there's a rumor that Alt's leaving, and I I called him up. I was like, you got to be joking me right now, you know. I, I kind of laughed it off, and then sure enough, there's a press conference, and 
and uh, he announced his retirement, and it really caught me by surprise because there was no indication that he was ever thinking of stepping down. Um, I didn't, I didn't see anything of that, and I was shocked. I never thought I'd see the day when Coach Alt wasn't, you know, um, in charge of Wolfpack football. Um, so, but you know, I, you know, I, I, it was great to play for him, and I, I wish him the best. And I think, you know, it, it all worked out. I have been able to meet with. Coach Polian, and man, he's a he's a great coach, and uh, I'm really excited for for Wolfpack football right now. Just the changes that you know you see around here, and talking with the coaches and talking with the players, it's really something special. And I, I really look forward to seeing what they're going to do in the next couple of years. I think they're definitely on the right track, and and it's an exciting time to be a Wolfpack player and a Wolfpack fan. You surf, right, Zach? Yeah. Well, I'm not as good as I once was. <laughs> so. You know? So what's it begs the question, what's harder? Holding on to the ball after getting drilled by a safety over the middle or riding a twenty five foot wave? <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know, man. That's tough. That's tough. I would never get on a twenty five foot wave. I would be lying to you if I said I would do that. <laughs> I would uh, you know I might I might go out there with my longboard and uh, and surf the, the kiddie pool, you know, the sandbar, but I'm not heading out there to the to the big surf spots in by no means. Um <laughs> So I don't know. I, I think I think I'd rather take a shot from the safety than a twenty five foot wave because I don't know if I'm coming back from twenty five feet of uh, of ocean water coming at me unless I have a life vest or something. You know, I just don't know if I'm that strong of a swimmer. Dude, I'm gonna worry about you if I see you over here at the water park in Sparks and you're in the wave pool, <laughs> thinking that you're something special. Uh, let me ask you, man, because uh, we aren't. Uh, well, Ben is about six five. But you're going six seven two fifty five. I'm only five yeah. foot nine and a half, maybe maybe, maybe. five ten yeah. if I can push it. But hey, that's generous. Uh, yes, it is. But I look. I've always wanted to know what it's like to be that big. I know the chicks are <laughs> yeah. digging it, but yeah. what, there has to be something that sucks about six seven. Like, help me out here a little bit. Oh, you hit oh, your head a lot on things. What's absolutely. up? Absolutely. Here's the thing. So I will. You know, n- normally I can make it through doorways, no problem. <laughs> but when I put that helmet on. In fact, just today I was in the locker room joking around. I put on a helmet, and I was walking through a door and just smacked the top of the helmet. And, you know, just, you know, the whole neck crumbled, and I was like, that's not good. And then the, the, by far the worst, though, is, is either going to, like, theme parks, riding roller coasters. You can't fit on any of the roller coasters. And uh, flying airplanes. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not made of money. I, I've never flown first class, so I kind of get back there and I have to curl the legs up. And then you got some five foot five guy in front of me who looks back and leans his seat back right on top of me, and I'm sitting there for a six hour flight, and just stuck. You know, I, I got to do like some some meditation, breathing or something, so I don't just freak out. Was that an Italian in front of you by any chance? It might have been. Hey, and the guy turns around and looks at me, and he sees the big dude sitting right behind him, and he still leans his chair back. I couldn't believe it. Oh. That's what we yeah. call a tool on this show. Uh, oh. And by the way, uh, I'm six four. Sometimes it's hard to find clothes. Where, where do you go for uh, clothes at six oh. seven? <laughs> I'm an excellent online shopper. That is something that I've. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say I have the most extensive wardrobe, but uh, I got two little sisters who help me out with the clothes <laughs> and the uh, the hair products. And so, uh, you know, with, with with their help, I'm pretty set. Just don't go with the glasses with no lens like I'm seeing some of these guys do, man. If you make the NFL and I see you in a press conference, dude, post-game show, and you're rocking that, I might have to come after you, 5'9 and yeah. all. I hope you would because I, I'm no hipster, you know? There we go. I'm no hipster. I, uh, I don't think you can do both with the long hair and the, and the, the clear glasses. I think you just got to pick one and go that route. And we talked earlier, um, I think that you have to have the greatest hair in Wolfpack football history. Oh, man. Hey, listen, I saw that tweet just about four <laughs> minutes ago, and I almost started tearing up. I didn't I didn't know what to say. I was getting choked up. That's, uh, that might be the biggest honor I've ever had in my life. Well, who's your biggest competition? I mean, who else could come close to you? You know what? Uh, right now, we got, you know, with Coach Alt, he didn't like the long hair. And so, uh, so I kind of had to... You know, I was kind of had to be an innovator a little bit, and uh, fortunately, he, he let me hang on to it. But uh, right now, they they're kind of got a little bit more freedom, and and you know, we got some guys. We got Mac Gallus, he's got the long hair going. Uh, Brock Hecking, he's got the mullet, the bleach blonde <laughs> mullet. That's something if you've ever seen it, man. I I didn't know what was going on when I saw him when I came back, man. That thing, you know, it's business in the front and it's party in the back, and uh, that's what he's all about. So. 
It's, uh, you know, I definitely have some competition. Yeah, you keep it up, my man. You might take that uh, contract for head and shoulders from Palomalu. <laughs> hey, I would love it, man. I, <laughs> I told I told my agent, any, anyone who wants to supply some free hair products, man, I'll sell out. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Sudfeld. He is on Twitter. You can hit him up there, and yeah. uh, hopefully you'll be seeing him in an NFL uniform here coming up very soon. Zach, really appreciate it, man. Good luck with the NFL. We'll talk to you down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. It was a blast.